All right, guys, we are back once again for a third place match against, oh, sorry, with X Rocks versus Dignitas. We are here on Nepal for a King of the Hill map. And we have seen, you know, we, we saw Dignitas the first time. Unfortunately, they fell in a very close match uh, to, to X Reunited. Their comp did not seem particularly strong, but maybe it's just how good X Reunited is. Do you expect Dignitas to bring this out in the very end? Uh, Dignitas did look pretty good toward the end of that set with X Reunited, but they did get 3 0'd on Lijong Tower. So, if the fact is that we're going to be here on Nepal to start things off, Elios is in the pool, and I want to say Dorado was the third map. I actually already forgot what we just read, but <laughs> a couple of King of the Hill maps to get us started could be rough for Dignitas if they can't get over what just happened to them. Uh, via X Reunited, but this is a completely different squad. They're not going to be running dive. Uh, the X Rocks guys do favor triple tank a lot more and tend to let Nalar run around as Trace or Soldier. Uh, so they're going to be a little bit denser, but not nearly as um, flank heavy as the X Reunited guys are. Yeah. Oh man, and they go down almost instantaneously right now. And this is just getting very one sided by side Dignitas, able to almost cruise it almost immediately. and. <laughs> It looks like we did forget one of the casters in, in Invitation. I thought everyone was invited. But Linkster playing on Dignitas, functioning as his own Voltage almost, being able to sustain alive and hopefully will remain alive in the context of all this. And right now he's just positioning in a way, in a flank position, trying to just get away. Yes, does drop the emote just to make sure, but aside of X Rocks, he need to find a way to make it the way inside of this engagement. As we get started on the next fight here, it's going to be the X Rocks guys charging in. Claws does run right into Wat7 and they capitalize on it with a nice Reinhardt kill, but losing the Lar means that they are basically just like a turtle right now. They can't really poke out any. Uh, Freed actually has swapped onto Genji from that uh, Roadhog a moment ago, so they do have a little bit more potential to branch out, but. Dignitas not capitalizing on what I thought was a nice advantage for them. Grabstock Surge comes out and catches basically the whole team. Bromos is going to launch Tac Visor from behind that and actually does secure the kill on Claws. So uh, still a bit of a battle on the point, but the fact is X Rocks are just reveling in the points. In fact, they've had control this whole time. Another Grabstock Surge and Sapphire come out. Dignitas finally making the moves they need to get the point. Yeah, and this is exactly where things are going to go from bad to worse for the side of X Rocks. You can't really 1v1 this team without a lot of coordination. You need to make sure your ultimates are where they should be. And right now, Claws does have that Earth Shatter, which should be, you know, a high part of ultimate. However, he will have to battle with Watt 7 to make sure he gets it off in a clean fashion. And Linkster is just not really playing scared right now. He's just running riot right now. He's just going sure to make sure they're harassing and they have to turn around to do it. That Earth Shatter goes straight into a Rhino Show, meaning they will not have it. The sound barrier comes out just as helps to state out the fight. Make sure no one on the side of Dignitas drops slow, and it looks like they might not even need it. Links are able to take up the kill on the Ana. That's one less healer available. Links are able to jet out, and no one seems to be able to tag him at all. Everyone's more focused on the center of the fight at the middle of the point, able to eliminate Tease out in the progress. And this is just this is getting a little rough for the side of X Rocks as Dignitas just seems to be coming out for a vengeance. Yeah, the two damage dealers, Bromos and Lynx, on the side of Dignitas, finally getting their jobs done here. Vainless uh, will be very close to a Transcendence. Bromos almost has Attack Visor ready to go again, so if they can just win this one next fight, I think uh, point A should be pretty much locked up for Dignitas. Claw's going to lead the charge here, shield up, trying to regen when he can. He does actually have kind of an awkward interaction there with the enemy. Ryan, Pulse Bomb goes out and does kill Claw's, so losing Genji and Reinhardt immediately means Dignitas should be able to clean up here. Nalar gets two kills in quick succession, but is not there for the Graviton Surge follow-up. Nalar does fall to Lynx, uh, the enemy tracer, and Dignitas will wrap up this first point. 100 to, uh, I believe it was like 38 there for the X rocks folks. Yeah, and this is getting honestly a little intense for both sides. And more importantly, Dignitas just, they seem to be on a, a completely another level when it comes to, you know, facing down X Rocks. X Rocks is not able to find the entries into the position. Nolar, who has been a very strong tracer, now has to find a way to deal with, you know, has to find a way to deal with Linkster. Linkster has just been able to play without fear, not really being contested in the background. And this might be a combination of just different teams being able to deal with tracers specifically, but need to find a way to make sure to deal with the flanking threats. And it looks like Linkster will. We'll be switching on to the Genji, so that's just another character you can play on this map. Sanctum does give you a few more options. Uh, Rodog does tend to come back in a little bit more. You see Freed 
actually swapping off of Genji back over to Hog. Tijal going on to Winston rather than Zarya, another result of the point that they're actually playing on here. Sometimes he can actually manage to save his own life just by leaping out of the pit. But as we get started, Claws blocking up shield to shield there with Watt 7. Dignitas is starting to win that tug of war, pushing them farther back. But in the background, Tizao and Lavar both gunning down Bromos extremely quickly. Deeker goes down on the side of X Rocks. And the healers are just dying left and right. No one's actually on the point, save for a Lucio and a Genji. It looks like Dignitas may have the numbers advantage. Actually, it's still kind of like a 3v3. Players actually returning from their first deaths already, and the point still has not been claimed. Uh, Dignitas has an opportunity to do so here with her Lucio and Reinhardt, but Navar is going to prevent them from actually getting the full cap. Once he goes down, though, Dignitas should be grabbing it first after a long, bloody battle. Yeah, and that just showed actually how competitive this potentially could be. You know, X-Rocks, it's not like they don't have the skill cap to do this necessarily. We did see Nalar and Tizao able to go into the background and create disruption and do exactly what they need to do. But they need to win that fight all of the time. Linkser now does have the um, the Dragon Blade able to use it in the background. And he's going to be able to stay alive. Remember, he needs to stay alive or to be able to use it. Watt 7 gets knocked off. And this is a great opportunity for Linkser to get into the background and use his Dragon Blade. Unfortunately, not able to kill, to secure any kills. He's hitting tanks. And it's so hard to do that when you're not hitting squishy. You don't get the reset for the additional damage. And Nalar being able to pick down Baneless is huge. Bromos is the only one left alive. And he'll be retreating off of this point to regroup with his teammates. He has been slept. And he's not going to be waking up anytime soon as Nalar does get the kill on the sleeping uh, soldier. And now they are pushing their advantage just a little bit. Nalar able to get some hits down onto Linkser. And now he will be backing off back onto the point just to re-engage hopefully in the near future. Nice uh, evasion there from the Tracer player, Navar, on the side of x Rocks. Didn't want to bite the bullet a little bit too early before the fight even began. We've got the Sound Barrier coming out now on the side of Dignitas. It looks like uh, Freed actually launched his whole hog as well. Navar gets a triple pulse bomb without even much setup there. Bromos, Famous, and Iboki all going down is really terrible for Dignitas here when they had a great opportunity to start off. Uh, turned against them with Nalar's a triple kill and uh, Tizal using his Primal Rage got a double kill as well. So big plays there from x Rocks to maintain the points and keep themselves in this game. Yeah, this is going to be very important. It's all going to be about whether or not they can maintain the momentum that they've developed. And this is when it's hard to deal with, you know, these these dive compositions because once they get enough momentum, they're putting you on the, your own back foot and forcing you to react to them, right? They can push the advantage as much as they want. And meanwhile, on the back on the lot, still gets it back. Look at that transcendence. Does keep enough people alive, but closing does kill Evoke. So that's another healer out of the table. And Valence is trying to do something with that transcendence. Not able to do much. Yes, the Gravitors does manage to catch people. And Benalar able to zip back and get it's out of danger and now everyone on side Dignitas it just caves into a corner the x rocks to be able to do it. and now they have the pulse bomb won't probably have to use it but toxic can't, can't do this on its own will jump out to his death to prevent him from being staggered and x rocks using this meant to great effect they've come back so hard in the second round yeah they really have shown a much better propensity for this point than the last uh staying in control all the way up to 92 percent now it is one last opportunity for dignitas if they can even touch the point right now it doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to do that what seven actually eats a pulse bomb to get started and the sound barrier comes out to the side of x rocks dragon blade is out now uh for dignitas but links cannot get anything done with it malar and tijau scooping a couple of kills means x rocks will just continue to stay on the point and tie things up one one now on Nepal and just to keep everyone clear at home this is a BO3 series but this Nepal of course is BO5 just like competitive so uh, gonna be going to at least two more points here before anyone wins this map Ilios also in our pool here so we could be seeing another control map right after this one yeah, and dude, this is so crazy right now. I mean, X Rock seemed to be out of the game after the first round of this map, but I mean, we stuck onto Nalar on my camera for the entire match. The guy's just doing so much work. He's being able to use, you know, to punish the fact that Linkster is on his own trying to find more of aggressive pushes, right? So he's not going to be controlling the background. He's not looking to fight that 1v1 Tracer. And what that's allowing Nalar to do is give him room to do as much as he can. And Linkster will be going back onto the Tracer. He does 
does not want to see, does not think the Genji's going to work. Claws with that great crucial hit charge onto Lucio in the last round was very important. Now, contesting the high ground here is especially essential, and Lilar is lurking in the background. He's waiting for the calls from his team, saying, okay, they passed this almost completely. Bayless doesn't even see him at all. He jumps in with Tizal, and he should be able to eliminate him. That's one Zenyatta down, and now Promos is trying to run back, runs back right into his bullets, and Nalar is just being able to push this advantage so hard. Toxic King gets isolated from the rest of his team as well, and this is exactly how strong it possibly could be. Toxic King will manage to bring it down, but that got so close after a while, and meanwhile, the side of X Rocks will be reverting. Yes, they did get a charge kill. We saw Claus just get a charge kill on Toxicans for the kill, but however, they will be resetting in there, and Nalar has to be happy with his efforts, although at the same time, they weren't able to finish a lot of kills in that three cluster, and getting killed there potentially could have had them flip the point. 15% already for Dignitas, finally hanging on here on the village level. And as uh, X Rocks try to come in, they actually do a little bit of a split push. Not everyone is in the top left, some came through that middle door as well. Tijal gunning straight for the uh, Zenyatta and Soldier over there actually did not work out for him. Claws goes down as well to Toxican and Dignitas are maintaining the numbers they need to continue winning this fight. Bromas launches the attack visor and has nothing to shoot at. So a bit of a questionable attack visor usage there. Dignitas already had kind of won the fight and Bromas had no one to shoot at. So uh, x Rocks just backing off for the time being and winning the group. 46% now for Dignitas, still sitting in a good position. And they're gonna split again. Uh, Winston, Tracer, and the rest of the team all taking different entry points. Yeah, and this is a battle of the Earth Shatter. I think he actually hit it behind him, but he's able to punish the Earth Shatter and close it. Luckily, gets saved by the Zarya ship, but will be going down soon. And Nob and Dicker can't even run away from Wide 7. Linkser is chasing him down as well. And in the background, they're able to clean up the majority of this fight. However, x Rocks is now able to control onto the point as they let everyone else die. Wide 7 will not be long for this world as he goes down and tees out. Clicking left click, able to test the cannon down. Two threats. Linkser goes down as well. So x Rocks able to use the fact that the side of Dignitas overextended in order to allow them to get their gains back and now TZ will be getting healed up he does have the primal rage in case he needs to displace anyone away from the point Dignitas will be using the upper left side to really advance and the gravity search catches so many people out of guard everyone's just knocking around each other transcendence will keep the majority of people alive however the ananade does prevent healing from some threats and the side of free is dropping down solo right now he's solo he does it the whole lot he will be able to linkser will take him down in the process and linkser 94 that means he will have pulse bomb soon enough will be forced to deal both the supports both supports will drop down and he does have the pulse bomb lands are right on to tease out tease out has no way of living through that winston will be going down and linkser how is he doing this linkser is just getting so many kills all opening uh, opening it up for his team to take advantage of it I mean, he finally swapped onto Tracer to actually be able to contend with Nalar, and that was, you know, a big reason that they lost the last point, no one really being able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and now that you've got Lynx, another capable F uh, DPS player actually battling against him, it's showing uh, very easily. Sound Barrier comes out here for Dignitas to get things started, but Bromas immediately finding two kills and a third onto Claws means Dignitas already has this fight in hand. Pretty much just a, a done deal here for X Rocks to, uh, to get finished off there, and that is the attack visor to finish things for Dignitas. Two to one now on Nepal, probably heading back to the shrine once again. We'll see once we get loaded up, but Dignitas uh, definitely reclaimed things after letting X Rocks get away with it on Sanctum, bringing things back now in Village with a comp that kind of mirrors it themselves. Links did a great job on Tracer, as you mentioned and uh, they were able to keep the lar from just going off every single time they get inside. Yeah, and now we're back back onto this inner sanctum level where, you know, we saw Dignitas kind of honestly get get a little roll by the by by X Rocks here. And I wonder if they're gonna make any adaptations. Links are back on the tracers. He should be able to control it, be able to win those duels. Free will be running the Genji as well. So this is more of a suitable 2-2-2 two, two, two composition on the side of X Rocks. I wonder if this will be enough. We'll be sticking on with Watch 7 and probably will be jousting for position. Linkster does manage to beat everyone ahead and we'll try to get into a good position on the side, forcing them to turn around. They do not want to cross over into this exit if they know Linkster is on the right side. Watch 7 goes for the charge. Misses completely and is going to get punished almost immediately. Free free just goes behind lines. They're going to chase him down. Watch Evans. It's not going to be long for this world. And Nalar will be getting another kill on the support as well. He's in the back line. So the fact that Dignitas now has to chase from two different angles is huge. But 
Malar doesn't go for the health pack for some reason. Instead, tries to fight Linkster back again. And instead, will get taken down. Luckily, that does not punish him as much as it could have. As the rest of the team managed to get onto the point and establish dominance. They will get the first capture on here as the time starts ticking down for the side of Dignitas. Uh, yeah, they cap it first, and this played out almost exactly the way that it did last time. The X Rocks guys just kind of looped all the way around the outside with Nalar and their tank, uh, who was Winston last time. This time, uh, Tizou sticking on the Zarya, but they still executed it almost exactly the same way. Dignitas pushed in really hard and got eaten up from behind. But as this fight unfolds, you can see what 7 starting off with a nice kill that gives Dignitas a chance to continue on here. Attack Visor is active. Uh, for Romas, but uh, he's not really lighting up the smoke very much. It seems like all his targets did run and hide. Uh, still getting killed they're looking for. Vainless finishing off the Lucio there of x Rox allows them to flip the point. 35% for the blue team here. Lynx getting a nice and staggered kill on TXAO means that it will last a longer. The Kusas should be getting up to about 25%. Pulse Bomb goes off directly onto Watt 7, but he has the Harmony Orb and no one there to help kill him off. So uh, Dignitas still standing tall. Yeah, and this is where sub is going to get a little complicated for the side of X Rocks. Need to find a way to break through. Close does have his ultimate, so that's going to be a big way to break through the big barrier. Watch that, gets charged almost immediately, but he gets punished hardcore by, and now Freed in the background generates that nano play. We'll be trying to do as much as he can. Transcendence keeps everyone alive, along with that double support ultimate. So Freed backing off smartly. He does not want to be able to contest. He knows he's not going to get a lot of damage off. Not worth it if you're fighting against Transcendence plus Sound Barrier. Luckily, on their side, they did manage to burn a lot of these support ultimates. The only bad news is they have no control of the point right now, and they're going to struggle to even get into the Sanctum at all to challenge it. Oh, there's a uh, potential here for an Earth Shatter battle, and there's also a Graviton Surge on the side of X Rocks. So they actually have the more powerful tools to break in here. He catches three immediately with the Graviton Surge. The pin through uh, does find Vainless, so removing that healer is going to be really nice for X Rocks. Toxic and on the point, trying to 2v1, does get taken out as well. So X Rocks finally getting the they're looking for off the back of a really great Graviton Surge. 69% for Dignitas as they regroup. It doesn't look like x Rocks. I don't know. They can't really press forward with the composition that they have. One side is going to be weaker than the other. Just whatever side Reinhardt's not on is the side that Dignitas will choose to go through. So um, we'll just see how this pans out. Zarya actually getting reps and recharge instead. They may actually contest over here now that they see what they're working against. Yeah, and right now his shield is going down relatively much. He did not get a chance to use his Earth Shatter, so he still has that available for the next fight. Nalar in the background does take down Baneless. Unfortunately, the Earth Shatter doesn't really do a whole lot, but it doesn't really matter for the rest of his team as the rest of the team is able to clean up. Watt 7 is going to get picked off slowly. Actually, does manage to make it away, even though he's tagged with the Ananay. Won't be able to heal. 73% on the clock. Freed being able to stalk this, his prey at this entrance. They're stopping Dignitas from getting into the Inner Sanctum, which is very important as the clock starts ticking down. They're already at 8 one percent 90 percent left on the clock they do not have enough time to really stall around as much as they did but broma takes down nalir nalir has been such a high quality player high impact player he's not gonna have him for this next fight and freed still does not have ultimate and meanwhile we're gonna jump on to links there who's in the background has that pulse bomb that big bang theory does it click anyone it doesn't really clinch anyone but it's more than fine watch seven is going off on his own so i guess he didn't even need the pulse bomb at all to do some damage and they will be able to flip just at the 99% mark, 73%. Links are playing aggressive. He doesn't want to give them any room. He wants to stall them outside as long as he can. Getting a kill here means that they will have to stagger back, make sure they're all grouped together at six. That buys them some valuable time and allows them to you know control the point for just a little longer. Watch seven will be the man to watch though. That that Earth Shatter is available and will be great to the isolating Freed and make sure he's out of the way. But he gets charged right into that Zarya shield does protect him and keep him alive. But Freed in the background with that Dragon Blade able to do as much as Again, gets hit by the Earth Shatter, I think. Not able to do much, and Lynx are able to close it off. But in the meantime, they have been able to flip this point, and this is just getting really raunchy on the side of Dignitas. Able to flip it. They will be able to hit the 100 mark. And yes, that is going to be the first map of this best of three going to Dignitas. This is actually very hard fought. It does not seem that x Rocks was giving up a fight very easily, but Watch 7 with that great triple kill at the end for them, to win the game for them. The lore. This had to be the triple pulse bomb on Sanctum that had no setup. Just incredibly lucky that they're all stacked on top of each other there. Um, but it does pay off, of course. That is the point. The only point that x Rocks actually took during this Nepal set. So, um, nice play there.
as usual, from Nalar on the Tracer. Link's actually got to commend him just for being able to switch onto Tracer himself and contend with Nalar. So uh, Dignitas take the first map there. And this is just a BO3 here um, for this uh, third place match. Nepal, Ilios, and Dorado were the maps in the pool. So Ilios or Dorado will be up for grabs by X Rocks, whichever one they let us know. And there is, uh, again, 100 euro on the line here for this BO3. A loser gets nothing. So this is uh, kind of the last chance over a long slog yesterday and today. Lots of hard-fought battles to actually get something for your time. And Dorado will be where x Rocks is taking us. Yeah, it looks like Dorado is a very interesting map. I mean, do you plan that Dignitas will be using the same composition we saw against Reunited where they're trying to use that, that triple DPS composition? Or do you think we're going to see something else coming in for this map? Uh, whatever works. I mean, Toxican actually got a lot of value on Farah last time on Dorado, so I would not be surprised to see that again. I think the Mercy pick was kind of weird last time. I don't know if they're going to want to run that again with uh, Vainless um, going for that, you know, fat resurrection. But... Uh, anything could happen. Dorado, you know, hasn't really changed a whole lot in recent memory. Just the number of tanks really is uh, the only thing that ten tends to change uh, from patch to patch. So whenever the teams are ready to go, it looks like we will begin. Here we go. Game two on Dorado between X Rocks and Dignitas. And as we get into this game, let's see what the setups are for either side of the team. I, I never know if Dignitas is actually going to run this lineup, but we did see Vainless run the Mercy before. Toxican has shown to be more than a capable Pharah, and this is going to be very interesting. As we saw, they have been able to use the Pharah to great advantage on their side. So we'll be excited to see how they're able to use this on this specific map. The offensive looks looks very similar. Of course, the defensive look, X Rocks, um, will be running the Torbjorn, I think, if he does run out with it. Uh, this is pretty typical. He does run this on Hollywood, as we did see a little bit of yesterday. How do you think Torbjorn realistically does on Dorado versus more of a, like a static first map like uh, King's Row or Hollywood? Uh, sorry, one more time. Oh, sorry, yeah. So... We've seen like more like we've seen more uh, Torbjorn on like static first uh, first uh, maps like uh, King's Row and Hollywood. How do you feel like Torbjorn really does on a map like Dorado? Uh, Dorado's weird because like his first turret spot is gonna get him maybe like eight or nine percent by the time they actually completely destroy it, and the next spot that you'll tend to put it is up in the window where their Ana player is right now. Um, I've I do play Torb on defense here on Dorado from time to time, usually with a sim. Um, but I think that he's not great, honestly. Like, after the first point, definitely won't be staying on Torb. Uh, but the fact is, if you can get that armor, uh, that armor train rolling and get everyone on your team with the plus 75 armor, then it doesn't really matter so much. Torb is there more as a support than a damage dealer oh, anyway. Oh, man. Toxic can take out, a kill. Yeah. Like, again, this is the same thing that happened against X Reunited, but if the fight is too long, uh, then it means that the kill was for nothing, right? Because the cart is still moving through that free area. Yeah, but meanwhile, he is ready. He does spot out the turret. So if he takes that down, that's going to be one turn out of the way. So Ung has to put it in a suboptimal position. And no one can take care of Toxican right now. Toxican is just in the air. You can't even put that turret up there anymore. Get out of the way, man. Switch characters or something like that. But right now, Vainless is keeping him alive. And he's being able to abuse the fact that Torbjorn is not able to use it at all. He does get a lot of the damage. Now, this is the problem on the ground, though. X Rocks is taking advantage of the fact that his team's not being able to follow up on quite a few of the kills. Tease out will go down. And Toxican does take down close so the big shield that's been preventing him doing a lot more damage is going to be out of the way and this is like the third turret he's killed torpedo you're wasting your money putting on turrets like this <laughs> but bro Moss being able to subject it and now he's in the back and dick are just not even ready for this we'll be going down very quickly nalar soon to follow and toxic and not even have to use a rocket barrage at all we'll be able to move this point closer close a we'll be getting in but it seems like almost he should have just kind of stayed with his team and tried to take high ground in this instance he will be delayed and it does not seem like he'll have high ground for this next big push Dignitas is playing super aggressive they're not even letting x rocks get out of their own base 
Yeah, everything going fully in the way of Dignitas there. They're already pushed up very far as well with that Fair Mercy combo. They didn't even need the res. Uh, they still have it in hand for this second stretch. And this is about the same place that they used it last time uh, during kind of the first fight here. Once the uh, defense actually used the first of their ultimates, Mercy was right on hand to bring them back. So uh, we'll see how things work out. Toxican actually launches a barrage very early, but he does kill the super important soldier. And Lucio's way out of position. Aang was on the opposite side of Dignitas his partner, they literally just turned around and splattered him. Here comes the Dragon Blade out from Lynx. He gets a kill with some help from Bromoth's Pulse Bomb, and has a couple ults to use, but a lot of mileage gained. And this stagger is ridiculous. Still, X Rocks uh, just feeding into the Witch Dipper here. Dignitas doing a great job again, hanging out on the high ground, not allowing anyone to uh, take the defense that they want to. They're actually going to have to take the low ground long route instead, and the payload's going to push all the way through the choke. Yeah, and this is big for them, right? They still have the Mercy Red, so in case anything does happen, they do have the ability to res almost immediately right now. So the links are in the background, does zip through and does kill T's out. That's one Zard down, not enough shields in the background to really do anything else. The res will come out in the meantime, meaning that this fight has effectively been reset. And the lore not able to do much with that tactical visor plus nano boost because most of it does get reflected. Links are will eventually drop, and it looks like they have been able to reset the fight on the side of x Ross for Bromos in the background. I wonder what Bromos is doing. Bromos. We'll be, be able to kill him. We'll die, but in fact, we'll get that pulse bomb taking out clothes as well. And Toxican, still not really. No one's really addressing him out in the air right now. He's No one has a hit scan to necessarily uh, zone him down. So he has been able to use his damage. However, it looks like the side of Dignitas will be backing off. They want to group and attack as six. They know that their spawn is much longer than the spawn on the side of x Rock, so they do not want to be staggered by accident. Yeah, Toxican's doing a good job just not getting shot at, basically, trying to stay hidden, bouncing around a lot of different areas. Here comes a Graviton search here from the defense. Only Watt 7 is caught in it, so not the best ults ever, but the kills are going their way anyway. X Rocks gather up four kills in very quick succession. Dignitas will have to go back to the drawing board on this one. Yeah, and they did not burn a lot of ultimates. Toxican does kill himself to make sure he doesn't get staggered. Uh, he has that 95%, so that Rock Barrage is available. Admittedly, it's going to be a harder skill shot to hit because he doesn't really have any way to protect himself. Maybe he will wait for Vainless or Evoke to really have like you know, support ultimates so he can stay alive. But on the other side, Linkzer and, of course, Watt7 do both have their high priority ultimates. That's going to be more than enough to take care of them if need be. And they've caught x Rocks actually in a really bad position. Their rotation for ultimates actually isn't that great. Dicker doesn't even have nano boost yet, but hopefully we'll be able to use it to equalize, but he doesn't have a great target against maybe Close, just because of fact Claws will be able to, you know, uh, use the nano boost to gain more ultimate charge. And it looks like they're getting actually pushed back. They're super scared of Digging Toss right now. Uh, Dignitas actually, yeah, coming in through a, a top left route there, have a lot of room to work with the range that they've got. And Lynx actually dive on uh, Tijao in the back line. That's an easy kill for them. However, the fight is kind of taking place in three or four different places. Bromas actually launching the attack visor from high ground should end up getting the kill on Freed as the Roadhog goes down. So do the hopes of x Rox's defense. Malar comes in with the McCree and actually does salvage a kill before going down himself. Deeker on his own, unlikely to do the same. He's going to flee and either jump off the side or get taken out. Toxkin does get credit for the kill there. The cart still has not hit the checkpoint though, so the last second heroic loss does prevent the cart from actually rolling in. That gives enough time for Tija to get back into the fight. Now Aang, and there is a Widow in play. Lynx has swapped onto the Widow and finds the kill on Lucio at the last second. Will roll into the point. Two minutes and 40 seconds left here for the final stretch. Yeah, and this is where it gets harder and harder. That Widow is going to change the way that they had to play. Because remember, they used to be able to contest high ground very well. With that Widow, she will be able to pick off people. Make sure that you cannot play super safe. You have to make sure you do not look at an angle specifically that leaves you open for her to pick you off. And right now, he's just a Linkser. is just sitting there looking underneath the stairs. Looking, trying to find a way underneath the shield just to get some damage off. And right now, Dead Eye will be activated right there. The fact is... Oh, Claus gets charged, so Claus does not have the shield to be up. And now in the back on Alar, we'll use the death, uh, sorry, dead eye of his own. Unfortunately, I think Transcendence does manage to heal it. Actually, no, actually, he shoots through this sentence if he charged long enough. So he will be catching three people. Toxin has been able to back up. And right now, this is about trying to regain control from the side of Dignitas. They're still playing very aggressive, though, which is actually kind of weird. They should be waiting for the rest of their team, but... For so far, it looks like that will not be the case. Tijiao is dropping in the back, trying to separate both parties from each other. And it looks like the side of Dignitas will finally be backing off once Linkster has been taken out. 
Now that Linkser is dead, I have to wonder if he, yeah, he's going to switch immediately onto Reaper, which makes a little bit more sense for this close quarters combat he's about to have. Widow was not going to get a ton of free picks from across the room inside here, especially with the nice barrier setup that Claus has going here. Uh, Nalar with a triple dead eye earlier, very solid stuff after basically uh, Toxicant was only able to get one with his, and now he can jump into his own Reinhardt. In the background, uh, T Zhao actually jumps in again and just gets absolutely surrounded. I don't know if he's trying to force the fight or if he's just mis, you know, miscommunicating and actually getting in there way too early. His team is never prepared by the time I see him get melted, but as it is, uh, good kills here on the side of Dignitas. Toxicant gets shut down during Deadeye. He's nowhere near the fight right now. The fight is breaking down in Dignitas' favor, potentially, if they can kill Claws, but the card itself, uh, no one really there on either side. Lynx finally shows up as Reaper, but it looks like defense have had enough time to rally and get back control of things, Dignitas still moving the cart. The fact is, Lynx is there moving it as much as he can by himself, but as the files in, it's uh, the ultimate stacking up on x Rox's side. Yeah, and this is going to be big. Earth Shatter is available right now for Claws, and it's going to be about trying to get the shield down. There's only 23 seconds left on the clock for the side of Dignitas, so Dignitas will need to engage as soon as possible in order to just, you know, push it to the end and make it harder for x to really, you know, compete with this. But we're going to jump on with Nalar, who has, honestly, we saw him not have as much as great aim, but it's going to be all come down to him. If he gets his dead eye and open at the right point, he will pop it, forcing that shield to stay up. He knows he's going to zone them into overtime. He's not really using it for any other reason besides that, so he... Dead Eye will be used instead, and now Transcendence with the Earth Shatter keeping people alive for the most part. But Bromas from afar will be taken down, and Vainless in the background trying to do as much as he can will get taken down by Nalar. So Nalar, who has been, you know, the hero of the Master War, making it very difficult. What gets Flashbang as he tries to get up? So there's no way he's gonna make it out alive. Toxicant just getting left click down on it, and Nalar being able to surround him. That shield's not gonna do very much for you, and you can't even do it yourself. Evoke J will die, and yeah, Overtime had been on for quite a while, so that candle's burning down super quickly. They stop him before they get the full push, but at the same time, Dignitas did get a very significant amount of ground on that last point. Good stuff from Dignitas to get it as far as they did, and x uh working their ultimates quite well in the final stretch to prevent them from actually fully capping. So we will definitely have a map winner here. Um, someone, you know, they didn't finish the map, so extra rounds not going to be possible. As we get a look at what Dignitas is running on the defense, it does seem to be a bit different. No Torb in hand uh, at the beginning, for example, which I, I just think it's it's not viable. Like, if you're running Torb on defense, you should have a Symmetra with you so that you can at least try to combine for the Shield Generator plus armor. Um, but even then, now you've got two Squishies on your team that can be liabilities if they don't uh, get their production going very quickly. So, um, yeah, just didn't work out for them there. I think... Um, May is being hovered right here by Nalar, but it's very likely going to be Soldier or Tracer once they actually get out the doors. Dignitas making any last second switches. The only interesting thing here is uh, no Ana again. Uh, we've seen that teams kind of forego the Nano Boost a couple times throughout the series, and I, I still feel like Ana is the right decision with Biotic Grenade being as strong as it is in both offensive and defensive capabilities, and the Sleep Dart itself. Any unwoken target is just enormous when it comes to a huge team fight, and uh, if you're only running Zen, hoping to get the value from Orb of Discord, it can be a lot tougher. It was a little bit easier to heal, obviously. Vainless can just drop a Harmony Orb on Tracer and Genji and say, go do your own thing. Um, while Anna definitely has to keep track of them, can be difficult. But um, I think Anna is still kind of a, a really valuable tool here. We'll see if x um does end up getting a, a big difference made from it or not. And Nalar has a couple seconds here to be able to switch, but it looks like he's going to leave as May. And this may is interesting because basically you can use the wall to funnel off and divide the enemy team. It is a hit scan character, so you will have the ability. But more importantly, it's so easy to deal with kind of uh, the choke like choke holds or like hard to break points because you can drop that blizzard, force people to evacuate from there, and then allow yourself to push through. So she's actually relatively good in certain scenarios. I'm wondering if Nalar has been getting a lot of practice, and he's getting more headshots. He's got he's just got three dinks at least from being hurt from back there, forcing them back and force allowing them to gain the advantage. And this is where X Rock is going to be able to use his advantage. That wall does get used, but Watch 7 charges right into him. So yeah, that was may have been okay, but I guess, you know, you don't really want that to happen when you you basically give up your life for it. But looks like the side of Dignitas will be aggressive in this thing. And man, Linkser going for the big kills. He's not even caring about how dangerous it is to be pushed out that far. He does have his pulse spot, and this is great for his side. I'm very excited to see Linkser so comfortable on a character. 
He's doing a great job as the first fight comes to a close. It's Dignitas hanging onto the cart exactly the way they wanted to. Getting the kill on May was a great catalyst to eventually win the fight there. Now Nalar is back with the rest of his friends. Claus has that barrier, keeping everyone healthy. In the back line here for Dignitas, uh, no one is actually applying any pressure to them. So there's a little bit different play style than we've seen them have to go up against in recent times here. Watt7 charges in, gets absolutely surrounded. x Rock's doing a good job with their kind of juggernaut death fall. Uh, May plus three tanks is working out pretty well here through this choke as no one can really get in to contest against them. Romas is actually behind them, Lynx is behind them, trying to take some hot shots at the other side of the barriers. But as the ults come flying out, Romas can't get the kill he's looking for. Claws with the nano boost. Drops the Earth Shatter and it looks like Xbox should be able to secure point A here. Yeah, I was trying to find a Dignitas player to get their point of view, but they were all dead by the time I switched them. Claus being able to get that double kill allows them to push relatively easily. Now they're going to have quite a lot of time to address the second streak phase. The thing that Dignitas does have going for them for it is that they will be able to take high ground relatively easily. They're not going to be staggered in a way that, you know, they don't have the timing for it. They should be able to have that forward position on that end. Nalar now does have Blizzard, so in case they want to push through the second point relatively easily, that's not such a big deal. You can throw the Blizzard down and force them you know, to use a support ultimate or something else, or just even to get out of the area. But that grab on Surge keeps everyone together. The Pulse Bomb lands on so many people. Everyone just gets burned down. And man, that's great from Graviton Search. However, that Blizzard will cage everyone together, stopping the momentum from anything from happening. Freak gets two kills, luckily because everyone's frozen. However, the side of Dignitas able to, you know, come out of that slightly better off because, you know, they got more of the damage out first. The Blizzard was only able to do so much. So they've been able to reset, and now they should be able to advance the car a little more as Dignitas wants to recover and regroup at six. As the cart continues to move here for, through the streets phase, Dignitas having a little uh, trouble actually re-establishing the high ground. Of course, if you let Zarya lead with that bubble, the enemy team tends to back off. It is really hard to hit hooks from the low ground now as well. Free trying to take a free shot uh, doesn't quite come up with anything. Bromos actually sneaking around up there. Again, it's kind of weird. McCree is in just an odd place right now in the meta. Um, because he kind of does have to do some strange flanking techniques from time to time. We've actually got Widows in play on both sides as well. Uh, Lynx does get the headshot kill on the Mar, so uh, x Rox might want to think about going Winston to counter the Widow rather than trying to out-snipe him. Yeah, and this is getting really complicated on the side of x Rox. They need to figure out a way to break this defensive hold. There are a lot of ultimates that are available, but I guess they're going Sniper versus Sniper in this case. Nalar on the Widow looking for Lynxer specifically. Now, I don't know why specifically he wants to use it. Does does manage to clip the head of Zarya, so she is going to be relatively low, but she will heal through the shields at all. So this is kind of a really bad position. You're trying to fire from underneath the stage. You need high ground in order to get better angles for her, but Nalar will be using this to try to counter, you know, Lynxer specifically, trying to land a few shots but not able to do it and we're gonna flip on to Linkser see if Linkser has any better luck in the background he's gonna get more of an angle no one's actually trying to address him right now he does know he's going to push the push oh man no lore how did he manage to kill them that's so huge being able to bring down the enemy widow like that meanwhile x x rocks is slowly decaying they're not able to support this immediate effort side of dignitas being able to push it slightly x was actually able to stop these initial pushes now they're just dealing with supports cleaning them up side of X-Rox just trying to stall out this point just a little more but Dicker's is going to die and Unk is left alone he will not be able to run he does not make it far he gets taken out and that's a good hold from the side of Dignitas that's some interesting heroics there from Nalar actually getting the headshot on Lynx but they could not get any follow-up kills as uh, Bromos and company came back out toward the point Widow was missing a lot of the shots there uh, Nalar was so uh, unable to basically capture the point that they're looking for. One minute 35 seconds left is not a ton of time either. Graviton Surge is going to have to come in really big here uh, for Dignitas if they're going to try to hold it. And on offense, Claws' Earth Shatter is basically the only tool they have working for them. Aang might be able to reach Sound Barrier, but it's not a sure thing. Lynx is already way up in the front, takes out Nalar. Uh, so that's only five members standing for X Rocks as Bromos' Dead Eye does go through. He gets a kill on Freed as well, and that's basically a dead push. One minute, eight seconds left for X-Rox to respawn and try to get a cohesive attack in here. Dignitas should be feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, and good job from Bromas being able to, you know, 
use the fact that hey he's able to get a free dead eye off with their gravity search everyone's kind of trapped right there so being able to use that and stagger them just a little more is a good sign however 49 seconds left on the clock there's a lot of support ultimates on the side of x rocks they should be able to push through this if need be they still have a lot of offensive tools to use it on so it's going to be up to whether dicker decides to really use a big decision we'll be using on tease out in the background tease out gets immediately slumped not able to use that primal rage so that's all time to waste now ung will try to use that sound break in order to make sure they can stay for the rest of the fight. Freed has been clawing through a lot of the Dignitas opponents. Bromos has not been challenged yet. Will be taken down. So Freed has been able to save this game. No offensive ultimates, but at the same time, they're able to score through the second payload. Okay, now it's do or die time for both sides. If Dignitas managed to hold, that will be the BO3 match uh, completed with Dignitas in third place. Or if X Rocks managed to push it, we will be going to a third map on Helios. Uh, it all kind of hinges on this next one or two fights as Dignitas bounce into position here on the high ground. They're rolling out with three tanks. Lynx has swapped over to Roadhog off of Widowmaker. Uh, that cart does not have to go very far. I would have expected them to actually jump down by now because the X-Rocks basically have enough time to flank all the way around. Team Jow's jumped onto the DPS dealers now and is trying to just smack him around now with his primal rage. Lynx does get the kill on Claws, so offense going to be thwarted just a little bit. Lynx taking some free shots. Navar started his whole hog. He's just trying to keep them off the cart. He's not doing a good enough job as the rest of the tanks come flooding in here. It looks like Dignitas do have a full handle again. 54 seconds now. x Rock need to regroup. They need to die or run away and get that last honest attempt at trying to win the game. Yeah, and that good sleep at the end allows Zaker to go off without contributing any more ultimate charge. Freed will be waiting. Actually, very smart decision to wait outside and wait for the heal so, so his supports can get more of a charge. Um, and this is great because he understands, hey, we have that nano blade composition online. I don't need to heal by myself. I can give my Ana that extra second away. And now they're down to 24 seconds left on the clock. They need to figure out a way to do this. Nano Blade is available, which should be the way that they're going to win for this. But Toxkin can change this fight entirely if they get a good grab on search. The grab on search catches so many people in the middle of this, and now and no one can move. Freed, despite having Nano Blade, not able to contribute much for it. He has to die almost instead. Claws will land a very clutch Earth Shatter, keeping this viable. But Veilus says, I don't even need it. You're down for the count. And looks like overtime will be being triggered. Freed, despite not having Nano Blade anymore, trying his best to do as much offensive damage, but he'll just get taken down. And the side of Dignitas being able to take down overtime extremely quickly. They're going to win this best of three third place match. Dignitas taking a 2-0, winning Dorado. Very, very close, Dorado. The scoreline doesn't really do it justice there. They were literally like a meter apart by the end of it. So everything timed out, everything, um, you know, battled to the very bitter end there for X Rocks. Congratulations to them taking fourth place in the first Strivewire Monthly Ball and Dignitas taking third. They played a ton of great matches to get up to this point. So uh, it sucks that their tournaments are over, but Gamers Origin versus X Reunited is a BO5 a grand final that we will have for you guys next. And it, it will, you know, finally give us our, our first winners of the Striveware monthly event, thanks to the 3,800 folks watching at home. But uh, now I assume we're going to have just a little bit of a break. I don't know if they already drafted the maps or not, but either way, this is a chance for you guys to go grab a drink or a snack and let all of your Overwatch playing friends know that this grand final is about to take place. Yeah, of course, and we'll be right back, guys. But thank you guys so much for hanging out, watching the Strivewear Monthly Melee. Shout out to our sponsors, obviously our title sponsor, Strivewear, who's been doing a lot of the tournament practice stuff. So actually, if, you, if you've if seen the Strivewear link, basically it's how teams are checking in. Uh, they're able to ready up. They're basically allowed to talk to tournament administrators, allowing for easier communication. So thank you so much, Strivewear, for doing it. Obviously, another sponsor is Phoenix.gg, a new esports organization that's been coming up. I do think it's a, it's a UK-based one, but they've been around for... Uh, for a little bit so far and hopefully we'll be seeing them more in the future last but not least thank you so much to our tournament admin nookie who has been doing so much work behind the scene as well as contributing to the prize pool as well so third place will walk away with 100 dollars the winners of this will be walking away with 350 euro i keep on saying usd because mm -hmm. i live in america and that's 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 the currency that we use but um, in any way, yes, Josh is right. We will be taking a short break before we get into this next best of five. This is going to be for us to relax our vocal cords, for you guys to get some water, get some snacks, and make sure to be back. We'll be watching the X Reunited versus Gamers Origin Grand Final best of five, and we'll bring it to you as soon as possible. <laughs> 